Welcome back. One of the newest additions to Unity 3.0 is the inclusion of something called Beast. Now Beast is a light mapper and what this is, it's basically a renderer that has been integrated into Unity. It's been used for years by many of the top AAA game developers and publishers to create more realistic and better lighting for their games. So basically uh, the way this works is it's built into Unity we simply hit a render button and our light maps get rendered with the uh, few pushes of a button okay but there's a little bit more to it it's not that simple to use so I'm gonna show you in this video I'm gonna introduce you to it and get you started with it as quickly as possible so beast can be pretty simple to set up at your initial render so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we need to get beast to work in order for beast to uh, to work we need to tell beast which objects to light map in our scene Okay, but before we can do that, there's one important thing that we have to make sure of. Okay, in order for light mapping to work, we need two UV sets per object in our scene, um, only for the objects that we're going to go ahead and light map. For this specific scene, since it's just an environment, we don't have any characters running around or things like that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and light map everything in the scene. Okay, now we can see that the shadowed areas over here are pitch black dark see this areas where light is not hitting is pitch black dark because I turned off the environment lighting in real life it doesn't work this way in real life life uh, light bounces off of objects and uh, those dark areas get filled with indirect lighting and that's what beast is going to do for us but before we can do that we need to mark which objects are going to be contributing to the light mapping process right now by default no objects in the scene will contribute to the light mapping process so we have to manually come into unity and tell Beast which objects will be participating in the light mapping process. So to do that is pretty simple. When we select an object inside of Unity and we look at the inspector over here on the right, you notice that there's this new parameter here called static and it's a checkbox uh, and it's currently off for each object. So if we turn it on, we just told Unity to mark this object and put it into the Beast light mapping process. So I'm going to turn that off. So where can we access the beast parameters, controls, different things like that? Well, if we go over to the window menu, we'll go down and we'll see this uh, menu item called light mapping. If I go ahead and select that, this opens up the light mapping window. This is basically the hub for beast, and I can use these controls here to control beast, control the quality, tell it what to bake, what not to bake, and things like that. So basically, this the way that this window here is broken down, you can break it up into three sections. We have the object section over here. Then we have the bake section. The bake section controls all of the parameters for Beast Light Mapper. So the things that are going to control how fast it renders or how slow it renders, the quality settings, things like that. The map section right now is empty because we don't have anything light map. What the map section does, and you'll see this later on, it'll show you actual uh, the maps that we're creating, the light maps for our scene and we can control the array of light maps and things like that the object area is empty right now because we don't have any object select so let me move this map over to the right you also notice that at the bottom of my viewport here I have a light map display uh, little menu up here and basically I have myself three options I have the ability to turn light maps on and off I have the ability to control shadow distance we'll talk about that a little bit more later and I have the ability to control resolution and we'll talk about that in a bit and that little menu pops up when you turn on the light mapping window. If I close it, the little menu disappears. So I'll go back to the light mapping menu. Okay. Now the way this works is pretty simple. Let's select an object. Say for example this wall right here. Uh, say I want this to participate in the light mapping process. If I, if I select it, the light mapping window will show it selected here in the object view. Okay. And by default, like I said before, it's not static. All objects in your scene are are not marked as static. What a static object is, it's an object that's not going to move in your scene. It's an object that needs to get light mapped essentially is what it is. So you can tr think of that as turning it on and off for light mapping. Right now it's off. So if I turn it on by check marking it on, these options sort of uh, come to light. So I have a scale and light map option which allows me to choose what the scale of this and the final light map is going to be because there's going to be a big light map with a whole bunch of objects in it and the more space of that light map an object takes up the more uh, high resolution the light mapping for that object is going to be 
Then I have an atlas parameter here which allows me to control uh, some a few different things here. By default though, you should leave these settings alone. If you want to get up and running with Beast as quickly as possible, we'll leave those settings alone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark every object in my scene um, as a static object. Okay. And the way I'll do that is pretty easy. I'm going to hit Control A to select everything in my scene. And you can see here that the static flag is actually turned on. So if I go to all these objects, you can see that now all these objects are marked as static. So if I look over here, you can see they're all check marked on, which is exactly what I want. Okay. Now another important thing is the scale on the uh, light mapper. All right. I need certain objects to contribute a certain amount to the resolution of my light map. So if I go down here to the light map display and I turn on show resolution, it might be a little bit hard to see, but if I zoom into some of these objects, you can see that there's these kind of what looks like a checkerboard pattern that has been overlaid on top of all the objects that are marked as static or marked for light mapping, right? What this does is shows you a preview in your viewport of the uh, the resolution of the light map. So the smaller these little checkerboard uh, textures are, the more resolution you have. The more resolution you have, the better quality the light map is going to be. Okay. Now, I don't want the uh, resolution to be wasted on objects that are not important. So for example, these background buildings over here, these objects are not important. The player is never going to walk up to them and see them close up. So we don't need high resolution light maps on that stuff. So to save that resolution for other more important things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these objects and I'm going to change the scale and light map. So I'm going to take the scale and light map setting here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it. Right now it's set to 1 which gives it a pretty big scale which gives it more resolution. So if I set that to something like 0.1, let me actually zoom in here you can see here the checkerboard pattern let me reduce that to point zero one and now you can see that the checkerboard pattern became larger this is what I want for objects that are not important so I'm actually going to reduce that to point zero zero five maybe which makes the checkerboard pattern a little bit bigger and I think what I'm going to go with is something like point zero zero one for this that way the checkerboard uh, pattern is very large so 0 0.001, you can see the checkerboard pattern gets pretty big, and that's exactly what I want. Because I don't want to waste important resolution on these objects out here that no one's ever going to see close up anyway. So it's very important to, uh, you want to spend or invest your, uh, your texel resolution for your light maps on things that are important. Okay. All right. So the idea is to pretty much go into all of these objects and change the scale and all that stuff to make it look um, a little bit better. Okay. And to pretty much spend your your texel resolution for your light maps on things that are important. So basically, stuff that's inside of this uh, warehouse here is stuff that's more important. These air vents up here. Maybe I'll reduce that a little bit. So maybe 0.5 look a little bit better for that. So I think you get the idea. So reduce the scale to reduce the quality on objects that are not important. Increase the scale to increase the quality on objects that are important. Now, another thing that is extremely important and you cannot do light mapping without this next step I'm going to show you here is UVs. Okay. In order for light mapping to work, you have to have two sets of UVs. One for the color and textures that we have applied to these objects and a second UV set for the actual light mapping itself. So how do we control this? Well there's two ways you can control this. Method A or method 1 is to create alternate UVs in your 3D package. So for example if you're using 3ds Max or if you're using Maya or Softimage or anything else you need to create a second UV set for uh, your objects. Now if you don't know how to create UV sets or you don't even work in those 3D packages it's not a problem. Unity can take care of this for you uh, we can use a second method, an alternate method. And the way this works is, let me actually move this light mapping window out of the way. If I go to the objects, the FBX objects that I imported, remember how we had that generate light map UVs option in the FBX importer settings? When you turn that on, okay, 
you actually tell Unity to create alternate UVs for you automatically when you import this stuff in. So it doesn't get any easier than that. Unity is actually taking care of it for you as long as you tell it to by check marking this uh, option box on where it says generate light map UVs. So since I have alternate UVs, I'm pretty much ready to go. Everything in the scene is marked as static. Uh, there's a few things I'm not going to mark uh, as static or that I may change. Okay, But um, for the moment, I think I'm going to be pretty happy with the settings I have. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make some quick test renders just to show you how this uh, beast light mapper thing works. Okay, Let me go back to my beast light mapping window. Now we saw that when we select objects, the object parameters pop up here in the object uh, window. If we switch over to bake, we have the actual settings that control beast. Now these are the default settings that you see here, 1000 final gather rays, um, 0 for the skyline intensity and things like that. Okay. Now, in my opinion, the default settings are not that good in certain areas. For example, the final gather rays are way too high. At a thousand rays, you're going to be rendering for a very, very, very long time. Don't be surprised if a complex level uh, takes an hour or more to render out. So it's one thing you got to keep in mind. And in another video, we're going to talk about controlling these quality settings and trying to get a good balance between quality and speed. For now though, I just want to get you quickly started with Beast uh, as fast and as easily as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the settings here for Final Gather Rays and I'm going to drop those settings. Basically what I want to do is I want to knock all the quality settings down to very, very low quality. This allows me to do very fast test renders because we're going to have to do test renders until we get something that looks good. So in order to be able to do that, I'm going to drop some of these settings. So I'll take the final gather rays. I'm going to drop that to maybe a hundred, uh, which is a pretty low amount. Okay. Um, the skyline in uh, intensity is not going to hurt the speed, but it is going to change the way that the uh, the lighting looks. Now, up here to mode dual light maps, we'll talk about this a little bit later. I'm going to leave it at the default. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bounces. I'm going to leave alone at default. I'm going to take that skyline intensity, and I'm going to put that at about 0.5 and this is the way that it works we have two ways that we can bake we can bake everything in our scene by hitting this bake button over here or we can bake only selected objects by hitting the bake selected button so the advantage to using the bake selected button is the fact that we can select an object and bake it really quick just to, to see what the changes are on that object because when we bake the entire scene it takes a really long time depending on how complex your scene is Okay. So this scene right here will take quite a while to render out. Um, if I select only specific object, like let's say for example, maybe this wall right here, maybe that wall right there, and maybe the street, okay? So I can tell a Beast to only light map these objects right here and it'll leave everything else alone. My Texel resolution is pretty high right now at 50, so I'm gonna reduce that, I'm gonna take that down to maybe like 20, Okay, or maybe even to 10. The lower that resolution, the faster your light mapping process will be, but you won't get uh, high quality. Okay, so the lower it is, the faster the render, but the lower the quality. The higher it is, the slower the render, but the higher the quality. Okay, so that's the way it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the bake selected button here, and in the lower right section of Unity, when it starts to bake, we'll get a little progress bar that actually shows you right down here see that this little blue progress bar it'll actually show you what uh, what beast is doing and about how long it's taking okay so baking does take a while to do it is a process that takes a lot of calculation so when you bake you need to be ready for that okay so it finished baking it only took a couple of minutes or maybe less and you can see here the scene looks a little bit different the objects that I had selected now have this really nice indirect lighting Okay, so we can see that the shadows here, remember this area that was shadowed where these walls are and, uh, and the, the street was right here, it was pitch black. Now you can actually see some lighting. This looks a lot more realistic and this mimics the way that light behaves in the real world. Okay, so if you're going for a realistic game, you want to use this stuff. Even if you're going for a non-realistic game, this stuff can really help out your lighting by quite a bit. Okay, 
Now, after it baked, it gives us some information. It tells us the texel size that we were uh, rendering at. It tells us how long the last bake took, so it took 57 seconds uh, right now. And then it tells us how many light maps it created and at what size. So it created two dual light maps at about 1K each and used up about 4 megabytes of VRAM. And then right here shows us previews of the light maps. If I go to the map, uh, map window over here, I can actually see the four light maps that were created right here. Okay, you can actually see that, and uh, that's pretty much it. If I go down here to the light map display uh, controls down here, and I turn off to use light maps, I go back to how my lighting was before. So this is before, this is after. Before, after. So huge, huge difference. Very big difference. Uh, much better quality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here. I think you get the idea of how to get started with Beast very quickly. In the next video, I'm going to get a little bit more in-depth about the Beast quality settings over here and uh, what they mean and how to control them.